one more brush we want to talk about in the mask mesh area. So we're going to hit the comma key, go into project, just double click that demo anime head. Let's go ahead and turn off floor and perspective. Hold down control to narrow it down to just the mask brushes. So when you click on the brush palette, you can go right over here to mesh splat. Now by default, mesh splat is set up with a lasso stroke. So again, hold down control. It's going to have a lasso stroke. You can just drag this out on your mesh and where this ends up is going to be kind of a splatter effect. And it's conforming to the surface, so you know that if you hold down control and go into picker, it's set to continue as Z because you know that once Z is going to sample that point that you pick on the mesh and then draw a flat plane out from that. So if you want to do like a little crispy chip there, you can use that option, but I'm going to go here and set that to continue as Z. That might kind of make sense that this would kind of, you know, conform to the underlying surfaces. So now I control drag and you're going to see you get a very nice brainy uh, kind of organic effect, which is totally cool. Um, like we mentioned before, let's go ahead and then do back to the beginning here. When we're working on mesh balloon, uh, we could get the same effect. I'll show you how to do that. So essentially what we're going to do is number one, set the picker to continuous Z because again, mesh balloon is going to want to just make um, meshes out here based on that initial orientation, we're going to set to continuous Z so it kind of conforms to my surface. Uh, so there we go. However, we're going to drop that Z intensity down quite a bit. So then when it conforms the surface, it kind of leaves just like a little blanket of mesh there. And there's no, no, there's no splatter yet. How we're going to do that is underneath the brush, we're going to go under our curve menu. And then again, hold down control, because if you don't hold down control, you're just going to be editing the standard brush curve. As soon as you hit control, that's the mesh balloon curve. So here you can go into noise, and as soon as I drop this down, you're going to see we're just going to start getting holes in our curve. And what that's going to cause is when I drag this out, it's going to start kind of splotching this up. Now you can, you know, do a compare and contrast between these two. Here's our recently used brushes here. So uh, if I go to mesh splatter, you're going to see the focal shift is pulled over here. So if you want to do that to your mesh balloon, you can pull this over to uh, the right, and you'll see what kind of effect that has on the overall mesh. This noise is a little bit higher on our mesh balloon. Here, so you can see if we drop that down, we'll get fewer holes, but that might leave less gaps. So now it, you know, those gaps are starting to close up. Looks like shredded cheese you left on the frying pan. So again, just go through here and kind of play with these numbers, get the effect you want, play around with your Z intensity as well. You can get more of a globby shape or drop that down and now kind of, you know, again, flatten it out even more. You know, kind of dial in to get that exact look that you're going for. Now another cool effect, if we go here to Subtool uh, and I turn on my polyframe, you're going to see I can control shift click my head and then go down here to Split Hidden and that's going to put our splatters on a separate subtool. So I can use Booleans like we did in the last video, just turn on Live Boolean, set that to Subtractive and now we're getting kind of a kind of a chipped in rock kind of look that, you know, I suppose you can go back to your head and you can even supplement that maybe with a little surface noise, just go in here crank up that noise scale, maybe play around with this curve a little bit, kind of get an interesting look, hit OK, and now you've got, you know, a very rocky texture with some really heavy uh, chips in there, again, provided by that Boolean head splatter that we have. But anyway, let's go ahead and turn off that noise there. Let's go ahead and select our splatter. Let's go ahead and delete that out of our scene. And there's another cool thing you can do. Let's go ahead and drop this down to a very kind of a dark gray, and we're gonna go say, let's turn off light boolean, go in here to color, fill objects. So now we have uh, this all, the vertices, the verts are all filled with a dark charcoal gray. I'm gonna hold down control. So again, we're either using mesh balloon or mesh splatter, whatever one you like, the modified mesh balloon or mesh splatter. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna choose a very dark red. And now if I draw this out, you're gonna see it's gonna leave kind of a dark red splatter here. If I control Z and undo that, I'm gonna hold down control and turn on gradient. And then for this back color here, I'm gonna choose maybe a brighter orange. So it's gonna do a gradient between this darker red and that brighter orange. So now when I pull this out, we'll get a dark red middle and a bright orange ring, or we can switch those out and now it'll do the opposite. So you can kind of get a cool lava effect with your, your splatters here. Again, control drag to unmask here. And we can go ahead and swap out our materials here. Let's go to Skin Shader for you so you can see this a little bit better. So you can also get this type of effect. And again, hold down Control Shift, isolate that head. Go over here to Split Hidden. Make this subtractive. And turn on Live Booleans again. And you'll see 
Live Booleans works with RGB as well. And you can go through here and it is a live Boolean. So you can go through here and you can move this effect around. You can go in here with your inflate brush and inflate it or modify it however you want. You can go in here to your deformers here. You can run the contrast deformer on it or decontrast it and smooth it out. So all sorts of cool stuff you can do to kind of dial in the look for your splatter mesh. Now we may revisit this again when we're talking with our, our snake curve brushes in the next video because you can go through here and you can also use this as like an ideation tool. Let's go ahead and turn off colorize here because you'll notice you just go through here and you just kind of splatter some shapes in here. You get some really interesting reads. You know, some of these patterns might end up jumping out at you. It's kind of different ideas. So if we were to go in here and maybe do a brush hit B on your keyboard and then S for the snake hook brushes. You're going to see one, two, four, and five are all in here. So you can grab one, say, okay, go ahead and turn on, turn off live Boolean, turn on Sculptors Pro. And now you can go through here and you can start modifying these splatters with these new snake brushes and get some real cool creature effects.